It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. The release of a controversial congressional memo has escalated the partisan fight over Russiagate. The memo, written by Republican allies of President Trump, alleges abuses by the FBI and Justice Department in obtaining a surveillance warrant against former Trump aide Carter Page. It contends that the Steele dossier, opposition research paid for by Democrats, was the key force behind Page's warrant. At the White House today, President Trump called the revelations a disgrace. But I think it's a disgrace what's happening in our country. And when you look at that, and you see that, and so many other things, what's going on, uh, a lot of people should be ashamed of themselves, and much worse than that. So I sent it over to Congress. They will do what they're going to do. Whatever they do is fine. It was declassified. And let's see what happens. But a lot of people should be ashamed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, you figure that one out. That last comment there from President Trump, you figure that one out, uh, was in response to a reporter asking if he still has confidence in uh, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who helped sign off on the warrant against Carter Page. Well, joining me are two guests. Colleen Rowley is a retired FBI special agent, and Max Blumenthal is a best-selling author and senior editor of The Gray Zone Project. Welcome to you both. Uh, Colleen, I'll start with you. So some disclaimers should be made here in that we have not seen the underlying intelligence behind this memo uh, written by Republicans. Um, and because that, intel that underlying intelligence has come out, that's part of the reason why Democrats say that uh, Nunez and the Republicans who wrote this have been misinterpreting uh, the actual uh, reasons and the causes of the warrant against Page, and they're not presenting the full story. So their rendering of the facts in the memo is disputed by Democrats. But so that said, um, you've read the memo now. Uh, what is your takeaway? Well, the memo is short, and therefore it was selective. Uh, we should all welcome the Democrats to produce their, you know, to have their memo come out so that they can point out any additional information that might have been, uh, you know, missed in this memo. But with that said, there were two or three things that were pretty shocking in the short memo um, that even I was not aware of from, from reading a lot about this. Uh, one was the serious conflict of interest that uh, I think he was the Deputy Attorney General, Bruce Orr had, and he, was, he played an important role because he was the liaison both before and after British spy Christopher Steele was terminated as a source by the FBI. Uh, Bruce Orr was the, apparently the, was a liaison between Steele, and Bruce Orr's wife was actually work, working for Fusion GPS, which is the uh, Clinton campaign uh, gr group that was hired to do opposition research and hired Chris Steele. So, I mean, I don't really, I don't think someone could even write a more serious conflict of interest than that. And that obviously pervades this whole thing. That's in the memo. The other thing that I thought was was pretty uh, damning was, and, and if you remember back in the Iraq War, remember when Dick Dick Cheney um, had uh, had Scooter Libby go to Judith Miller and and Michael Gordon at the New York Times and plant this false story of aluminum tubes designed for enrichment. They did this so that they could gin up the war with Iraq. And then, after this story was planted on the front page of the New York Times, then Cheney holds up the front page of the of the New York Times and says, "Aha! Look, the New York Times confirms what I've been saying." That similar story is embedded in this uh, FISA memo because what happened here is that um, Christopher Steele, in October of 2016, was leaking his story to a media. Uh, got Michael Isikoff of Yahoo News to write a story about it, doesn't tell the FBI. They then go to the FISA court and say, look, there's independent confirmation of Christopher Steele by uh, Michael Isikoff. It's on all fours with what happened. And I mean, really, it should really cause people of both Republicans and Democrats to, to worry about this kind of misleading of the FISA court. 
And again, so just to clarify for anyone who's confused because there's so many names to keep track of, Fusion GPS is an opposition research firm. It was first hired by Republican opponents of Donald Trump and then hired by the Democratic National Committee, uh, paid for by a law firm uh, working for, for the Hillary Clinton campaign to do the research that became uh, the Steele dossier, these allegations about Donald Trump. Max Blumenthal, uh, your thoughts on the release of this memo? Well, uh, first off, I mean, just following up on Colleen's comments, I think it's highly significant that Bruce Orr, who was the DOJ official, who was the liaison to Christopher Steele, um, knew about the origins of the memo. He knew uh, that Christopher Steele, at least according to the Nunez memo, if we're to believe it, Christopher Steele was determined to prevent Donald Trump from being elected president. And that is what animated the contents of his dossier, the so-called dodgy dossier. The dossier is really a bricolage, a kind of compilation of the greatest media hits about Trump-Russia collusion and have been mostly kind of discredited. And so there's an effort right now by the Democrats um, and you know their friends in, in the media, um, if you wanna look at this in kind of a nonpartisan way, to distance the Russia investigation from the Steele memo because it's now been so discredited. But if you actually look in the Nunez memo, it's very clear um, that James Comey was distributing um, the Steele dossier to members of Congress in briefings. Um, Comey, uh, th th this, this is actually reported in April 2017 in CNN sourced to two US officials. Um, so it's not the first time we've heard about this. James Clapper, former director of national intelligence, was also furnishing the Steele dossier uh, to people in Congress. I think before John McCain even obtained it. Uh, this, you know, this is sort of scandalous now that the Steele dossier has been mostly discredited. And now we learn that the FISA, if we're to believe the Nunez memo, we learn that the FISA warrant on Carter Page um, one of these obscure people we would have never heard about it otherwise, who is riding on the Trump campaign pirate ship, along with characters like George Papadopoulos. Um, we learned that the FISA warrant was obtained without any acknowledgement of the political origins of the Steele dossier, that it was funded by uh, sources very close to the Clinton campaign, like the Perkins Coy law firm. Um, you know, so this, is, it's, this seems like a case of FISA abuse. Um, and the, then beyond that, the FISA courts are a rubber stamp. I mean, we've, we've known that for years. Um, they're part and parcel of this kind of national security apparatus that's been used for mass surveillance. Um, so it's, it's significant that there was, uh, you know, that, that, that any information had to even be withheld to obtain the FISA warrant on Carter Page. Um, you know, the FBI and Justice Department have done everything they can um, to keep the information in this memo uh, from reaching the House Intelligence Committee. It only got there, it only got to Devin Nunes because of threats of uh, contempt of Congress, um, massive pressure on the FBI and the Justice Department. Uh, the FBI is in a state of total chaos right now. I mean, we've learned uh, about Andrew McCabe and his wife being uh, basically given half a million dollars by Terry McAuliffe, who's the former chair of the Democratic National Committee, uh, was the governor of Virginia at the time. And this was in 2015 before, you know, there was a Russia probe. But it just looks strange when McCabe's wife is getting half a million dollars to run in a local election race in Virginia. All of these figures um, are extremely compromised. And now Rod Rosenstein, we learned that he signed off on the FISA memo. So uh, I don't know how he can continue to oversee this investigation. I don't see how this is a nothing burger, but we do need to see more information. Number one, we need to see Andrew McCabe's testimony for the Senate Intelligence Committee. Um, Devin Nunes has claimed that McCabe stated that the Steele dossier was the main reason why the FISA warrant was issued for Carter Page. Adam, Adam Schiff has explicitly denied that and Democrats are now anonymously denying it to their friends in the media at the Daily Beast and elsewhere. So we need to see that testimony to know who is lying. Number two, the Democratic opposition memo should be released. So the ultimate effect of this is that more information on the Russia probe will be released. And I'm all in favor of that as someone 
who considers the entire narrative of Trump-Russia collusion to be a gigantic nothing burger. Right. So it's the memo's contention that Andrew McCabe uh, of the Justice Department testified. Deputy that, director of uh, uh, FBI, I think. Right. Uh, what, that, uh, that he testified to Congress that in, in testimony that we haven't gotten yet, that it was the Steele dossier that was the basis for the warrant on Carter Page. Democrats, though, say that that is uh, misrepresenting McCabe's testimony, which we don't have yet. And but maybe we'll see, like we saw the testimony of Fusion GPS founder Glenn Simpson. Let me ask Colleen Rowley, though, about a point that Max made about the FISA court being a rubber stamp for the intelligence community. Because part of the Democrats' uh, counterattack to this is that there's no way that uh, the FISA court would have approved this warrant of Carter Page if it was just based on the Steele dossier or uh, other um, unconfirmed information, that there must have been more because FISA courts uh, uh, don't approve warrants based on specious information. Your thoughts on that based on your experience as, a, as an FBI special agent? Well, the, the FISA court does have a track record of being a rubber stamp. There's only a very few applications in history that they have turned down. And when you say FISA court, it's a little misleading because it's really just one judge. There are 11 <laughs> judges, but when you have an application, you just go before one judge. Now, if that judge is not, uh, is not made aware of exculpatory information, as apparently was the case in that first uh, FISA application, and, and, the, and the corroboration, you can kind of, uh, you, you can more than guess on this because um, even Comey, when he, testif when, he, when he testifies in January, I believe, he says that there's been little verification of the Steele dossier. So he admits there was little verification. He called it salacious. He called it the salacious dossier. And he said there was very little verification. The, the corroboration that they talk about in this memo is what I just went through, which was this Isakoff article that the FBI used to prop up Steele. But in fact, Steele was the source of the Isakoff article. So that, of course, is, is a horrible thing. Now, we don't know what other, if there was any other corroboration. Apparently, Carter Page did take a trip to Russia in July. So I'm, I'm probably that was in there. So there was that bit of corroboration that he took a trip to Russia. So, I mean, uh, everyone pretty much, not, one thing that we don't know is in the meantime, and especially after that first application, how much additional investigation did the FBI do to try to corroborate or refute what was in this, you know, it was, a, it was several pages long. The Steele dossier was long and it was kind of bizarre. It seems like the FBI should have at least tried to then investigate that, especially since they were going again before a FISA judge every 90 days. They did this for a year. It's not just one 90 day surveillance. It's and even, even if you give the benefit of the doubt that first time, in all fairness, the FBI did not know that Steele was the source of the Isakoff uh, article. So even if you give them the benefit of the doubt, why did this continue for three more applications over an entire year till just, apparently this would have gone up till October of, of 2017, just a few, mo uh, a few months ago. And that's where no one knows that, you know, maybe the Democrats will tell us what went on in that meantime, who knows? But that's, that, there are a lot of questions about it. Well, and Colleen, also, let's say Steele was not Michael, Is Michael Isakoff's source for his article. Why is even uh, the intelligence community using a, uh, a article on Yahoo News as evidence to justify a, a, a wiretap, a, a surveillance warrant? Um, well, First of all, I think Steele admitted he was the source for that um, in some other testimony. But secondly, um, that corroboration, even though it would be seemingly be thin, was, was uh, you would think, probably all they had. Um, they got this Steele dossier, you know, in July, something like that, and essentially they ran with it. Uh, they didn't, you know, maybe tried to verify some of it, but they really acted quickly. And again, if, if you're in a a time crunch before an election, uh, you know, in the, in the weeks before the election, the FBI, again, to kind of sympathize with this position that Comey and others, McCabe and others had, they were investigating both presidential candidates, or in Trump's case, the uh, Trump's campaign. They were investigating both right in the weeks up to the election. 
that's that's a really unprecedented and really a pressure. I mean, you can't imagine the kinds of pressures that these these uh, in, officials would have had. Plus, on the other hand, they you know they're in a partisan situation themselves. Many of those officials had ties in to the Clinton campaign, so I think they were just hurried and they they uh, they they sought they used that article as corroboration. It seems like. Right. And let me say about Carter Page, which is that um, even though even if Steele was a, a source for the uh, surveillance warrant that was approved against him, he had been on in the intelligence community's crosshairs before because he apparently was the target of an alleged Russian spying operation a few years prior because he was trying to do business in Russia. And famously, uh, some alleged Russian agents had called him an idiot because they uh, just felt he was just someone they couldn't even d recruit. Uh, because he was so low level and so, in their opinion, clueless. And also, what's interesting about his role in the Steele dossier is that it adds to this pattern you see in the Steele dossier where everything it says is based on something that's already come out in public. So in the Steele dossier, we only learn about, we only learn about Carter Page after his visit to Moscow in early July was publicly reported. And it's probably for that same reason that we never see any mention of people like George Papadopoulos and Rob Goldstone who even though their role in this whole thing was already happening before, it hadn't publicly come out yet, which suggests to me that Steele and whoever his sources were, if he had any, were simply reading the newspaper and basing their uh, allegations off of that. Uh, Max Blumenthal, uh, picking up here, uh, your thoughts on, uh, on Carter Page and, and the kooky cast of characters that have uh, pushed the scandal forward. Well, let me let me pick up there. I mean, the reason that Jill Stein is under investigation by the Senate Intelligence Committee is because she was named in the Steele dossier. She was named in the Steele dossier because there was a torrent of media reports, including in you know partisan pro Hillary Clinton blogs, attacking Jill Stein for attending RT's Russia Today's 10th anniversary celebration in Moscow, and the Steele dossier falsely accused Jill Stein of being uh, having her her um, travel paid for by the uh, Russian government. In fact, Jill Stein paid her own way, uh, never took a dime from the Russian government for anything, even in her hotel room. So uh, that's just one small detail out of many in which the Steele dossier is basing information off of already published media reports and getting it basically wrong, uh, and in the process, potentially destroying someone's political career. Um, Beyond that, there is the uh, you know Colleen mentioned that uh, Steele had testified that he'd been uh, you know the source to Michael Isakoff in October of 2016. I believe the FBI decided not to pay Christopher Steele uh, to continue the investigation. So we learned there, and this hasn't been emphasized enough, that FBI Director James Comey had intended to pick up the slack from the Clinton campaign and pay to continue a private intelligence operation to investigate the, Donald, the, the uh, Donald Trump campaign's collusion with Russia. I find that kind of extraordinary um, that a private intelligence operation with partisan origins is being brought in to investigate a uh, presidential candidate by the FBI. Um, you know, Comey has not really been held accountable for that in any way. Um, but, you know, it's clear that the, the Steele dossier was central. The Steele dossier is also central to the reporting of David Korn and Michael Isakoff. And we learn in the Nunes memo that, as you mentioned, Michael Isakoff's reporting for Yahoo, where he was basically the stenographer for Christopher Steele. And he's also collaborated with the FBI to, you know, attack Sputnik News. And he's basically just a stenographer for the FBI and whatever other, uh, you know, anon anon um, spooks are hanging around. Um, Isakoff is out there promoting a book that he's published with David Korn. It's already out, I think, and it basically concludes that Putin has attacked America, destroyed our democracy, and elected Donald Trump. Um, and I would love for them to come on The Real News, one of them, or Isakoff, and actually support that claim. Um, because as we saw with Luke Harding, who published the first book on collusion in his interview with you, he basically melted down because he couldn't provide one single concrete piece of evidence to support the collusion claim. So Isakoff is running around right now today promoting his book because of the news around the Nunes memo. Um, you know, I, f I find that to be 
kind of scandalous too, and a really sad commentary on the state of the Beltway Press Corps. I mean, we have to remember that Korn and Isakoff were the guys who went after um, the Bush administration's um, unmasking of former CIA agent Valerie Plame and their pushing of false WMD claims. They went after an actual deception. Now they appear to be pushing a deception and in, in tandem with the FBI and the intelligence community and uh, the, the shadiest spooks around. Uh, the book has not come out yet uh, by David but Korn. It, it's on Amazon. I mean, it's, I it, it. It, it's on Amazon. Uh, it, it's available for order, and we do hope we can interview them about the claims. Max, one quick follow-up, and then we'll go to Colleen for final thoughts. Uh, has Steele confirmed that he was uh, a, a source for Isakoff, or is that just a speculation based on who Steele had, uh, knowing that Steele spoke to the media in the fall of 2016? No, I believe that's confirmed, isn't it, Colleen? It's in the memo, um, and he's being sued, I believe, and he's had to testify in court. Okay, and I right. So, so the memo, yeah, the memo documents this. Right. Okay. So Carter Page is suing Isakoff uh, for uh, because of what's come out about him, um, and that's a whole separate. Uh, that's part of this long, confusing saga. Colleen, can, can Rally, I just make one quick point yeah, please, before yeah. Colleen jumps in? Because yeah. you know, I'm gonna. I've, I've always. You know, I've been as opposed to Donald Trump as anyone watching this. I'm not defending Donald Trump. Uh, it, I, this is not about that. I think people should consider who are watching this what might have happened if Bernie Sanders had gotten the Democratic nomination and this level of uh, FISA abuse uh, by the FBI had been applied to him. And I, it likely would have. This is about a larger principle of the um, manipulation of the political process by an unelected element that's been crudely referred to as the deep state. I call it the national security state and has traditionally, um, going back to the McCarthy era, uh, meddled in, in uh, the democratic system and systematically de-democratized this country. So that's really uh, one of the larger issues. And the other issue is the revival of the Cold War, which is extraordinarily dangerous. Um, this dossier and the Trump-Russia collusion narrative has helped drive U.S. relations with Russia to a new low. Um, so I think, you know, we have to look at the larger issues here um, and not get totally lost in the weeds. Colleen Rowley, we're 30 seconds, but you're a veteran of the national security state that Max talks about. Uh, your final thoughts uh, on this issue and uh, your concerns looking ahead in the aftermath of the release of, the release of this memo. I couldn't agree more with what um, Max just said about the what the important point here is, which is that the principle of having a government that is uh, responsible and to the public and also to our you know checks and balances. We need probably independent investigation now because if the FBI is investigating itself, its own people, it's already a problem. This inspector general from the Department of Justice, you know, even that is under the Department of Justice. So I think people should read this and really ask questions, find out how much the Steele dossier uh, played into these later uh, fact, these later intelligence assessments uh, that said, you know, Russia is colluding, that most people now just assume are factual. They assume that that's facts. And and there really was no information there. And that steel dossier looks like it's what began this all. So um, more, we need to ask more questions. We need an independent investigation. And we, we need more people to be concerned about the state of our, our country and try to get us back on the right track. And hopefully we'll get to, to look at that uh, Democratic rebuttal soon uh, and also maybe see some of the underlying intelligence that the, the Republican memo is supposedly based on. Uh, Colleen Rowley, retired FBI special agent, and Max Blumenthal, best-selling author and editor of The Gray Zone Project. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.